Welcome to the Alger Podcast. Following the podcast, there will be a brief disclosure. Hello, I'm Alex Bernstein, and you're listening to the Alger Podcast, investing in growth and change. We're doing something a little different on the podcast today. At Alger, we're always getting a stream of well-thought-out questions from our investors, particularly concerning last year's difficult market and the current state of growth investing. Here to answer some of these questions is Alger's Director of Market Strategy, Brad Newman. Brad, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So just to jump right in, Brad, probably the number one question we've been getting is, after such a difficult year, when do you think growth will begin to outperform again? So to answer that question, I think you have to go to our view about what is causing the market to be volatile and what is weighing on the market. So we think the first part of the market headwinds was due to interest rates going up and long duration equities moving down. So just like long term bond goes down more with a given rate of interest rate than a short term bond would move, so too do long duration equities. And so growth has underperformed as interest rates have gone up. Now, that's been a valuation reset. We think that part is largely over. We think long-term interest rates have probably peaked for this cycle because we're getting close to the end of the Fed tightening and long-term interest rates typically peak a few months before the Fed's last tightening, last hike. So now we're left with the second phase of market headwinds. And in that phase, we think it's more about downward earnings revisions as the economy continues to decelerate. And in that period, we think growth will outperform because we think growth fundamentals are much more resilient. So we think growth underperformed in the first phase because the valuations were susceptible to higher interest rates. Growth may outperform, in our view, in the second phase because the fundamentals are more resilient. And we think that second phase is upon us now. And so we think growth, in our view, should begin to outperform any time now. Thanks, Brad. And so, as you mentioned, in this past year's market environment, growth underperformed. Why then did so many of the algae portfolios struggle even compared to their benchmarks? So as I mentioned, long duration assets have been under more pressure than shorter duration assets. So those are companies with higher growth rates with their cash flows further in the future. And Alger has even higher growth in general than its growth benchmark, which is obviously growthier than the average stock in the global stock market. And so because our stocks are growthier, they have their cash flows further in the future, and they've been more susceptible to the valuation compression due to higher interest rates. So it's essentially just because we had more growthy stocks that our performance was hit more, not necessarily because those companies are doing worse. In fact, when we look at the fundamentals of our companies, they're doing quite well. It's just that they've had more valuation compression than the benchmarks and the broad market because they are longer duration or growthier stocks than those benchmarks in the broad market. One question we hear frequently, and I don't know if there's a good answer to this, when is the bottom? So I mentioned earlier that I think there's two phases to the market headwinds. First phase of valuation compression, I think, is largely over based on higher interest rates, probably peaking. The second phase of the market headwinds is due to downward earnings revisions. I think that's not over yet. So until those numbers move further down or the market is clearly discounting further earnings revisions, I don't think the market will bottom until that happens. That said, I think there are some stocks in the market that have already discounted a recession, and those are the longer duration assets like small growth stocks, which are trading very cheap and even in line with some previous recessions. Thanks. This is from an investor who is clearly ready to re-enter the markets. They ask, when I allocate to equities, should I lean more growth or value? So we're obviously a growth shop. We've been doing it for over 50 years. I think, though, that the case for growth is at least as strong as ever. And we think that is really due to two structural factors. And I think that those factors will be in place for the next decade as well. The first one is acceleration and innovation. So everyone's familiar with the exponential growth rate of Moore's Law, which says the number of transistors will double on a chip roughly every couple of years. It's created tremendous wealth in the economy and tremendous transformation. These days, things like artificial intelligence and the sequencing of the genome are actually happening at rates faster than Moore's Law. So we think artificial intelligence is doubling roughly every four months. So 
innovation is dramatically accelerating. And we think that is a tailwind for growth and I think a headwind for value stocks. Uh, the second big structural reason for growth outperforming value and why we would lean towards investing in growth is due to style misclassification. So essentially, we think trillions of dollars of capital is indexed to the Russell style indices. And that's based on a simple formula and the fact that we think counting hasn't kept up with the changing nature of the economy. Basically, we think companies don't clearly allocate their intangible assets, things like research and development on new drugs or software algorithms, etc. And so when you're looking now at what's in the value indices, you're really looking at more tangible-based business models, not necessarily those companies that are cheap relative to their net assets or earnings power because then a large portion of the net assets are missing from the balance sheet. So for those two structural reasons, we think growth will outperform value. Brad, one investor asks, is the 60-40 portfolio dead, meaning an allocation of 60% stocks to 40% bonds? So we actually highlighted our views on the 60-40 portfolio being dead in mid-2021, where we thought interest rates were just too low to really help protect investors against volatility. We think owning bonds didn't help you in the most recent market downdraft. Now, of course, interest rates are higher. And I think that given today's interest rates, it would make sense for investors to allocate some of their capital to bonds. That said, I don't think short-term rates will persist. We think the bond market is saying that the Fed will cut rates at some point over the next 12 months, and whether that's in the next 12 months or 24 months, we think the very high short-term rates that we observe are probably not sustainable. I would just say that while there's some value at the short end of the curve, we would point out that the earnings yield on stocks is higher than the yield on bonds and is also very likely to grow if you're a long-term investor. And so in our view, that makes stocks compelling relative to bonds. And that's it for this round of investor questions. Brad, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. Thanks, Alex. Great talking to you. And thank you for listening. For more information on growth investing and for more of our latest insights, please visit alger.com. The views expressed to the views of Fred Alger Management, LLC, FM, and its affiliates as of March 2023. These views are subject to change at any time and may not represent the views of all portfolio management teams. These views should not be interpreted as a guarantee of the future performance of the markets, any security, or any funds managed by FAM. These views are not meant to provide investment advice and should not be considered a recommendation to purchase or sell securities. Holdings and sector allocations are subject to change. Important information for U.S. investors. This material must be accompanied by the most recent fund fact sheets if used in connection with the sale of mutual fund and ETF shares. Fred Alger & Company LLC serves as distributor of the Alger Mutual Funds. Important information for UK and EU investors. This material is directed at investment professionals and qualified investors as defined by MIFID FCA regulations. It is for information purposes only and has been prepared and is made available for the benefit of investors. This material does not constitute an offer or solicitation to any person in any jurisdiction in which it is not authorized or permitted or to anyone who would be an unlawful recipient and is only intended for use by original recipients and addressees. The original recipient is solely responsible for any actions and further distributing this material and should be satisfied in doing so that there is no breach of local legislation or regulation. Certain products may be subject to restrictions with regards to certain persons or in certain countries under national regulations applicable to such persons or countries. Alger Management Limited, Company House Number 8634056, domiciled at 78 Brook Street, London, W1K5EF, UK, is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority for the distribution of regulated financial products and services. FAM and or Weatherby Capital LLC U.S. Registered Investment Advisors serve as sub-portfolio manager to financial products distributed by Alger Management Limited. Alger Group Holdings LLC, parent company of FAM, and Alger Management Limited, FAM, and Fred Alger & Company LLC are not authorized persons for the purposes of the Financial Services and Markets Act 2000 of the United Kingdom, FSMA, and this material has not been approved by an authorized person for the purposes of Section 21.2b of the FSMA. Important information for investors in Israel. This material is provided in Israel only to investors of the type listed in the first schedule of the Securities Law, 1968, the Securities Law, and the Regulation of Investment Advice, Investment Marketing, and Investment Portfolio Management Law, 1995. The fund units will not be sold to investors who are not of the type listed in the first schedule of the Securities Law. 
risk disclosures. Investing in the stock market involves risks, including the potential loss of principal. Growth stocks may be more volatile than other stocks as their prices tend to be higher in relation to their company's earnings and may be more sensitive to market political and economic developments. Local, regional, and global events such as environmental or natural disasters, war, terrorism, pandemics, outbreaks of infectious diseases, and similar public health threats, recessions, or other events could have a significant impact on investments. Active trading may increase transaction costs, brokerage commissions, and taxes, which can lower the return on investment. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Performance. Frank Russell Company, Russell, is the source and owner of the trademark, service marks, and copyrights related to the Russell indexes. Russell is a trademark of Frank Russell Company. Neither Russell nor its licensors accept any liability for any errors or omissions in the Russell indexes and or Russell ratings or underlying data, and no party may rely on any Russell indexes and or Russell ratings and or underlying data contained in this communication. No further distribution of Russell data is permitted without Russell's express written consent. Russell does not promote, sponsor, or endorse the content of this communication. For Algen Company LLC, 100 Pearl Street, New York, New York, 1004 800 305 8547 algae.com.